What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out a hardcore survival title called Star Sand. And so anyways, if after watching this you wanted to get the game for yourself, I'll have a link for you down below in the description so that you can check that out. You'll also find a link to my central community hub, which is on Discord. If anything important is happening within the realm of the Nerd Castle, that's exactly where you'll hear the announcement first. So anyways, we're going to spend about 25-30 minutes with this game today. We're going to appraise its quality, see if it's something to get excited about, see if it's something you wanted to throw on your wish list. If after watching this you did want to do that, like I said, link down below so that you can check out the demo, or you can just wait for the release, which is coming in about a week or two. Let's go ahead and start off a new game. We'll play on survival mode because it's a survival game, so why wouldn't we? Let's give that a run and we'll see how the whole thing plays out. Okay, so we've got the selection of controls here, but I've already actually dove in and kind of learned the game a little bit before we even started off. So, not that worried about the keybinds. While running the desert marathon on the fourth day, you get caught in a sudden sandstorm between two checkpoints. Following your tracks becomes impossible and you soon get lost in a cloud of dust and sand. Blinded by the wind, breathing with difficulty, the sun setting in a direction you can't tell, you start wondering if you'll make it out alive and if you'll survive the desert. Yep, definitely looks like we are in the middle of a sandstorm, but there is a cube over here. A massive human cube, inside which we can shelter ourselves from whatever this ridiculous thing that's happening actively is. So, in we go. I positively apologize for whatever YouTube's compression is doing right now in this dust storm. I'm almost positive it's going to look atrocious, but as eh, such is the nature of YouTube's tiny, minuscule bit rates. And like that, we've collapsed on the floor and clunked. Oh, tinnitus! That's fun! Every adventure is better with tinnitus! Wee. Okay, so here we are, and apparently we are inside of some kind of... I don't know, dude. There's some kind of weird ritual carvings and stuff on the wall. You know, it appears to me upon observation that when we came into this place, it had, like, normal flooring and, like, carpets that were up against the wall and, like, rugs. And now we're inside of some crazy terror drone thing that's, I don't even want, look at that thing right there, dude. It's got eyeballs. All right, well, desert survival. This is one of the tougher environments to survive inside of. Good Lord. I've never been actually inside of a dune desert. All of my experience with desert survival has been in the American Southwest and in Nevada. So this is kind of a foreign environment to me right here. It's kind of mesmerizing, though, how the hills just go off into the distance like forever. Now, the first thing we're going to need to do is take a look at the UI. So in the bottom left-hand corner, we've got our current temperature, which is at 33 degrees Celsius. We've got our food meter right above that, our water meter right below that. Health is obviously off to the right. And then in the bottom right, I think it's implying, like, what time of day it is. I'm not super sure on that front, though. Uh, we need to pick up some rocks, and we need to get ourselves a cutting implement. Until we have a cutting implement, I don't think we're going to be crazy effective out here. And with a couple of rocks right there, we can go to the crafting menu, and we're going to whip ourselves up a little knife right here. Yep, the K is extra silent for stealth damage. That extra 1d6 matters. And so from right here, we're going to cut down this yucca plant. I do feel like that chopping animation is a little bit rough. I'd like it to have a little bit more weight behind it, and I'd like it to have a little bit more sort of momentum and just... Oomph, like, I want to see the character kind of shift when they use the knife right there. It's not something that's absolutely unbelievably terrible, but it does look a little bit stiff and cheap. And so I think that could probably be tightened up quite a bit. Now, let's go back inside of our house, because I feel like we've got a little bit of crafting to get done here. Although I should probably slow down on the running. When it comes to running, you can kind of, like, drain your hydration meter very, very quickly from what I experimented with. Um... There's a tree over there. Trees imply water. Palm trees are actually really, really, really thirsty trees. I know that. And so, like, I'm thinking we follow the trees. There may be a substrate or something that it's tapping into. Can't guarantee it, but palm trees drink a lot of water. So, I think, typically, they actually tend to be present in areas with a lot of rainfalls. So, we'll see. We'll head on over. Is this an altar, dude? Please tell me that this is not some kind of weird... Sacrificial altar. They've actually got Egyptian style hieroglyphs on it, too. This game does seem to be like mildly inspired by like Stargate. That's kind of what it reminded me of with some of the stuff that I was finding. All right, so cordage. Uh, we did pull a whole bunch of stems out of that yucca plant. 
And so we'll go ahead and turn those into chords so that we can play around with things and see what we've got going on. The two chords are almost done. I think like the knife and the axe basically have the same function. And so what I think we can get away with for right now is I think we can dismantle the knife to get our rock back. And then we can open back up the crafting menu and we can just make an axe because they're both cutting tools that are going to be doing the exact same thing for us at this junction. And so that should automatically go inside of our tool slot right there. The game is generous. We did start out over here with access to a water bottle. So we can drink from the water bottle to kind of refill our hydration. And I do think that I am going to do that. I think we're going to kick this right now. Just so we're totally full up. And then we're going to follow that tree over there. And we're going to hope... Are there any other trees on the horizon? Doesn't much look like it to me. See, that chop animation is quite a bit better. I like that chop animation. The knife animation was a little bit rough. I'd like to hear like a little bit of like a hurra or like a ha or, you know, like some kind of exertion whenever you swing just to lend it a little bit more kind of, I don't know, energy behind it. But yeah, I don't see any other trees. Okay. If I right click, it looks like we like bring the axe forward, but I don't know if that's like a blocking animation or not. If it is, it's kind of a... <laughs> it, it, if it is a block animation, you can't really tell that it's a block animation. I don't know. When I press right click, it looks like he raises it ever so slightly, but kind of hard to say. Our temperature is rising very, very quickly right now. 40 degrees Celsius is bad. We definitely don't want that. Extremely high or low temperatures are going to deal damage to you over time. I like how they got like the little, they got the little Bruno Mars notification at the bottom of the screen like, it's hot. Hot damn. On the phone, in the fire. That's like probably one of the top 10 most overplayed songs of all time. Oh, look at that. We've got little sweat droppies running down our face right now. Yeah, 43 degrees Celsius. Pretty toasty. Pretty toasty. Um, yeah, it does look like maybe we've got something over there. I'm going to chop this down real fast. I'm going to process some of the parts. If I stand in the shade, do I feel better? It actually looks like I kind of do. So if we stand in the shade, it looks like our temperature goes down ever so slightly. So that's a nice little effect. We're not leaving... I would like to see footsteps in the sand as well. Like one of those little things that I think like other games like Green Hell and, you know, The Long Dark do very, very well in the hardcore survival experience is like I love seeing my tracks behind me. And since we're walking on soft sand out here, I figure that'd be an option. So down goes the tree. Uh, we can chop the fronds off of it, which I think is a pretty good plan. It looks like we can pick these up for... Oh, we can chop them for stems. Okay. Well, let's do some stem research real fast. There we go. Yeah, give me the good stuff. We're going to need the stems in order to make more cordage. That's just, I think, something that we can't get away from. So there we go. Ropes, bindings, all that kind of stuff. They're things you deeply and desperately are going to need in a survival situation. We'll get that right there, and then we'll finish off the frond and the stem. There we go. Looks good to me. And then I think we'll process this trunk real fast, too. Just so we have something going along with us. I don't know if we can process, like, logs or anything else into... It looks like we can chop it up for sticks. But I think I see a little oasis down there. And so let's head off in that direction. Hopefully we don't get too toasty and absorb a little bit too much UV before we get down there. Did anybody pack the SPF 197? Spoiler alert, I don't think anybody packed the SPF 197. This is not the adventure for me. I'm very pale. I play video games for a living. I almost never go outside unless it's just to go to, like, Rayleigh's for groceries. I pretty much just huddle inside my office all day, every day. And so this is more or less a nightmare scenario for me. You've got that, like, white-yellow sand that's reflecting the sunlight back up and into your face. So you're getting sunburned on your bottom chin, on your armpits, on your face all simultaneously, dude. This is the worst. I would assume there's some kind of, like, day blindness or something that would go into this, too. Like, some desert version of snow blindness. Just from, oh, there's a critter over there. Huh. Okay, well, apparently something lives out here. What is that, like an ibex or, like, a dick dick or something? I don't know what that is. I know it's hot, UI. You don't have to keep telling me. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and we're just going to hoof it on down here. And we're going to get ourselves all nice and submerged. And take a good little swim in the oasis. However, I wouldn't drink out of this Oasis IRL. You see that animal walking away from it right there? That's precisely why I would not drink out of this. 
is just because, I mean, I'm doing it in a video game, but like in real life, animals are going to come down in this, they're going to poop and pee, it's stagnant water that just sits here, it's full of mosquitoes, giardia, amoebas, all kinds of things that will make you very, very ill and die. To be fair, your chances of surviving in this situation right here are pretty much none. This is a really, really rough, bad environment that I would not recommend for anybody. If we dive underneath the water, we can cool off a little bit faster, so I am going to do that. Given the absolutely brutal heat of the sun out here, though, I... I don't know, man. It's pretty bad out here. It's pretty bad. We're going to have to figure out some kind of shelter, some kind of overhang, something that throws a shadow, and really, we're just going to need to operate almost exclusively at night in this environment. That's what I would do anyways. The real risk you're going to run into, though, is that the atmosphere very thin around here. Not a lot of cloud cover or anything. And so it doesn't tend to hold in heat. And so what you run into, especially when I used to do, like, surveys and stuff down in the southwestern desert, is that during the day it's, like, 120 degrees, and at night it's, like, 10 degrees below freezing. And so you just have this massive temperature variance that's really, really hard to work around. It's always some variable brand of miserable. I'll put it like that. I'm going to get my temperature down just a little bit so that we can work and actually, like, get something done. We'll take a look at the crafting menu, and we'll try to figure out maybe in the shade of a tree or something over here what it is precisely we can accomplish. So the shade of the tree is right here. Yeah, it's indicating whether or not I'm in the sun. Okay, so in the shade of the tree, I'm going to suggest first and foremost that we drop our logs. That's right, first thing I'm going to do when I get to the, uh, the oasis, I'm going to drop a log, dude. I'm a classy guy like that. And we're going to try and work in the shade as much as possible. We also need to find some more rocks for when this tool inevitably decides to break on us. Selectivity on items does seem to be fairly accurate, especially when you've got a pile. So that's definitely something that I think some games miss the mark on. I'm able to grab the sticks and whatnot, even when they're up and in between the logs. And that's kind of one of those underrated things with a game that I run into a lot is that item selectivity off the ground can be kind of rough. Uh, I am going to fill up our canteen real fast, our little water bottle right here. Just so we got some extra water to bring with us. Did it fill all the way up? It did indeed fill all the way up. Now, let's take a look at our crafting menu, and let's figure out what we can pull off here with what we've got going on. So there's a shelter. I think the shelter is a really fantastic idea. I think we get a shelter up and ready to run. What does the desert balm do? It provides you protection from the sun and also from sunburn. Oh, okay, so that's nice. Um, is there any fruits or anything laying around? It said that I needed desert fruits in order to make that work. Hey, there's one right there. Okay, so if I can make myself some kind of, like, home manufactured sunblock, I think that's a great idea. I do want to walk this little area right here, and I want to find out where the most shade is. That's what I want to do the most. And so, oh, there's a little frog, dude. Can I catch him? Oh, apparently, well, I mean, hey, let me get that frog. Let me get that frog. That looks like dinner to me. A little bit of frog legs. Yup, 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 yup. We used to go frog gigging when I was a kid all the time. It was actually, we did that maybe once a year when I was growing up. We'd go frog gigging. It's where you go out with a big trash bag and you go out with a big spotlight on like a John boat and then you shine it on the water after dark and the frogs just stare at it and you can just pick them up out of the water and put them in the bag. Then you take them back home and have a big old crab or have a big old frog fry. This seems to be our shadiest space over here. So I think I'm going to chop from that side. Although the shade does seem to be a little bit kind of selective about where it wants to be. We've got some kind of little obelisk or marker over there too. Because I'm paranoid, like I personally would probably not venture very far away from this water source. I just, I don't see a lot of good things happening if you go out in any direction. I don't know. We've got something over there just kind of peeking up over the rise. But it's hard to say. A date palm? Are there actually dates up in there? Let's see if any dates fall out of this thing. Dude, dates are delicious. I love dates. If you're ever down in Death Valley, there's a place called China Ranch. You should look up the location if you're ever going down and through Death Valley. If you go out to China Ranch, it's a date farm that supplies a fat chunk of the dates for the West Coast. And so anyways, if you go down there, they make milkshakes and they have like knickknacks and all kinds of other random stuff. And uh, they'll make you a milkshake, a vanilla milkshake out of dates. And it is one of the most tasty things I've ever tasted in my life. It's absolutely, positively great. Uh, let's go over here and... 
Well, let me cool off for a minute. It's kind of hard to get any work done just because I'm in the process of, like, dying. All right, let's make this desert balm. I know that was, like, our only food supply, but I just need to have some kind of clearance. Like, I overheat so quickly when I'm in the sun that I just need some kind of protection here so that I can actually get some work done and figure out what we want to do. Next up on the list after that is going to be a shelter, I think. That's going to be the next thing I get after. So we can get some cordage rocking, I think. Although we are a little bit out of space in our inventory. So making like a pile, I think, would not be a terrible idea either. Let me go ahead and stand in the shade for just a little bit of cover here. Then we'll go into the inventory. We will drop all of those. Chop them up into stems. And I'm just going to manufacture like a fat stack of ropes that I can use to bind things off. All right. I'm going to need some more fronds before too long. Uh, can I eat the dates? I can indeed eat the dates, and they actually did a number on our hunger meter. Very nice. Okay, drink a little bit more water just to keep ourselves satiated because I noticed that our health meter wasn't really regenerating anymore. Drink animation looks okay, although it's a little bit stiff. Let's maybe... All right, so what do I need for a shelter here? In order to make a shelter, I need two fronds and I need some cordage. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to convert all that into cordage so that we don't have to worry about that ever again. We can climb these trees right here. And that'll allow us to get up here and grab some coconuts. That'll be nice. So I kind of want to deplete the coconuts before we do anything else. Our cordage is in the process of being manufactured. So we'll chop this guy down so that we can take advantage of the fronds. There we go. Many, many fronds. Handle it. All right, so we're going to go to our shady spot over here, and we're going to try to make our shelter in the shade. And if I was in this situation with the water right here during the day, I would chill. I would make a fire that was off over in the sand over here with maybe some kind of A-frame covering it. And I would just boil water all day, every day, as much as I could have. Although we don't have a boiling vessel, which kind of worries me. We just have this plastic container right here. So that would be another problem that we would need to solve. I don't know if a coconut husk would actually hold up to boil. We have to figure something out. But let's get into the shade over here. And we will make our shelter. So there's our shelter right there. It is currently in the process of being manufactured. And we're going to treat this like a little bit of a base over here. One thing I really like about this game is that this game does not have a map. What you have to do is you have to mark these locations. And so if you put down a marker, we will then know where we are on this blank tap or on this blank, I guess, uh, papyrus. And then we can mark it, and then we remove the marker so that we know kind of where it's at. And then by walking steps and putting in markers, we can basically create guidelines in between locations so that we don't get lost. That's a really, really cool feature, and I'm looking forward to playing around with that. So there's our shelter right there. Probably just pitch it out right here. And so we can only sleep at night. We can dismantle it. I don't know if we can get up inside of it to get any type of cover from the sun. But we do have a shelter now, which is really, really good. I'm going to kind of pace around over here and see if maybe I can find myself. Oh, yeah. Let me refill my water bottle, too, real fast. Water bottle. There we go. I like that dipping motion right there. That was a good animation. The animations seem to be kind of like hit or miss. Like, some of them are really good, and some of them are really stiff and bad. This kind of goes animation to animation. I like the environmental design. I think it looks pretty good, and it does feel toasty. Um, we'll go ahead and grab, just from like the color palette and whatnot that they're using, it's definitely hot out here. It gives you definite warm vibes. So we got a few more stones laying around. I don't know if I can mine these right here. Like these rock embankments that are along the sides. I don't know. Does this do anything special over here? What are you? No indication. No way to really tell what that might be. Uh, it doesn't look like I can chop the bush, so that's not interactable. Grab a few more stones. I want to make myself a campfire. That's sort of where I'm at, is I want to make the campfire, and I want to roast up that frog real quick. Ooh, there's another one. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's another frog, dude. One cannot get too selective when it comes to dinner. There we go. All right, give me a little bit more frog meat. I have no... What is that? Hold on, what are those? Date seeds. Oh, we can plant the date seeds. Okay. Not a bad terrible idea not altogether against it 
Looks like the sun is kind of going down, so I really, really appreciate that. And it looks like the stars are starting to come out. I'm wondering when all the sci-fi stuff is going to start. Because you know, the sci-fi stuff has got to be coming. Uh, let's get this campfire built, though. If we wanted to make a campfire... Oh, we can make a turban if we have cloth. How do I make cloth? I need hemp. Okay, well, I know what hemp looks like. Hemp is just like a marijuana plant, and so, like... I know what that looks like. Uh, we can make a turret. Oh, I thought we were going to be doing like a defense thing. We also have storage boxes. So if I have two stones and a couple of sticks, we can make a campfire. Let's do it. I don't know if the campfire stays forever. Like if this is like a permanent installation or if this is just a temporary fire. It looks like we do have the stuff to make a straw hat, which I think is a fantastic idea. In fact, you guys would be jealous of the massive wide brimmed hat that I used when I was doing surveys out in Death Valley. I had a hat that was like, dude, it was sick, bro. It was a sombrero that was, like, huge. It was probably two and a half feet wide. <laughs> like, it gave you a lot of sun coverage. Like, it covered both my shoulders when I was wearing it. It was on top of my head, covered all the way across both of my shoulders. Oh, my God. Why is it looking all misty out here now? Am I, like, dying or something? A little bit concerned about this. Hmm... All right, well, we got to cook up some food. How much is that worth? It restores 15 to 20 hunger. Well, it's going to have to do for right now. And then maybe we can get some more dates or maybe we can get some coconuts or something to kind of fill out the difference. I'll put you down right there. Okay. So it looks like we need wood that goes into here. So there's our wood. And then we can put the frog meat inside of there. Yeah, let's cook it on up. And in the meantime, we got more yucca over here, so that'll supply us with some more sticks and whatnot. I'm not sure what that whitewash effect is that I've got going on right now, but it seems to be disappearing. So I think it's just during kind of like the end of the day. All right, we'll throw the rest of the sticks in there to let it keep burning. I don't know if I need to run a permafire out here. Maybe I'll put a log in instead. It's log, it's log, it's big, it's round, it's wood. That's the reference that I always go with whenever there's a log in a video game, okay? I could make a calculus reference, but that just seems kind of gloaty and unnecessary. Uh, I don't think I'm very good at climbing trees. Uh, I almost made it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, dude. Let me... There we go, there we go, there we go. Okay, where's the other... Oh, it's... Did I get both of them? Oh, do they stack? Okay, there we go. Items not auto-stacking is mildly obnoxious, but... The problem is I really don't want to eat the coconuts. The coconuts are a receptacle for my water. And so I'm a little bit worried about doing anything with them. Yeah, we'll go ahead. Oh, wow, that filled up like a half a meter. Okay, never mind, we're not going to have to. Oh, wow, we burned through our wood with a quickness, though. Got some coal right there. Maybe it might be a good idea to come up with, like, a storage box or something. We don't have a lot of inventory space. Storage box is going to be four sticks and ten stems. Okay. Yeah, the nighttime has kind of, like, a weird blurry milky effect thing going on. Not sure that I'm a fan of that. It's kind of hard to... I don't know. It looks, like, really washed out. Maybe the gamma settings are off. Doesn't look like it has anything to do with, like, a gamma setting, or at least there's not a gamma setting available. And so, like, I felt like the game was actually really crystal clear until we got to nighttime, and now it just looks kind of washed out. I don't know, maybe I'll come back in the morning. Some very nice reflective effects off of, like, the weapons, though, and stuff next to the fire. I like the way that they're playing with the light right there. That looks pretty solid coming off the top of that napped axe right there. I dig it. All right, so we got some cooked food over here. We'll go ahead and I actually probably just eat that straight out of the machine. There we go. Or straight out of whatever we got going on. Uh, yeah, let's sleep till morning. That sounds good. Saving is probably a decent idea too. You sleep the night away in a soothing, dreamless sleep. One little thing about that right there, I could still swing my axe and stuff while I was inside of that little transitional period. They may want to put some kind of hold on player inputs and whatnot while that's streaming on through. Uh, it looks like it's going to get hot. I'm at 69 Fahrenheit. I appreciate that, but let's go ahead and drink some agua. There we go. That looks good. Get our temperature down. 
Perfect. Oh, I swapped it over to Fahrenheit. I was going to say, why is our temperature so high right now? I thought we were like 90 degrees Celsius, and I was like, oh, that is not bueno at all. Okay, so storage crate. That's what was next up on the docket. We needed some stems, and we needed some sticks. Okay, I have logs, so we can drop a couple of those, and we can process them for sticks. So I think that's a good place to start. And then I think I still have some fronds left over. If not, we'll chop down some of the trees over here, and then we'll process those into stems. There we go. We can also use that for fire making. And as far as stems go, how many did I need for the box? We need 10 stems. Okay. Drop you, and that should give me enough stems to play around with. Okay. Storage box, here I come. Storage box. Can't craft inventory full. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. That was what I was a little bit concerned about. We'll chuck those out. We'll chuck those out. There we go. And then maybe we'll put the, uh, you know, we'll put that in right there. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Just put it in a spot, all right? Put it in a spot. Okay, so storage box is done. And it's a beef chonky boy of a storage box. I like it. Oop. I've dragged and dropped my stuff all over the place. I've made a catastrophic mess of the situation. All right, let's store everything up that we're not actively going to be needing for the next little bit. I think we are going to have to be more of a frog hunter if we want this whole thing to come to fruition and work out for us. But that will store up some extra space. I think we're going to get hungry before too long. I don't see a frog around. So that leaves us in a situation where we've got date trees. I mean... It actually looks like I can kind of just jump. There we go. Let me get them dates. And then, do we have another date tree around here? Yeah, there's some dates right there. Come on, let me go up the tree. There we go, a few more dates. Are four dates going to be enough here? Those meters are moving, man. Four dates be enough, but I'd rather be full up for a little bit. I also don't know how long it's going to be before things respawn. So, some more dates right there. I'd like to have a full meter before we set out and actually try to do anything. There we go. Got my dates. Perfect. See, who said I can't get a date? I got a date covered. I would like to see a eating animation put on into the game, like you holding the dates and eating them and like, hmm. You know, like noises to sort of emote the fact that he's enjoying his meal. Or at least tolerating his meal. There's our water. Alright, well let's go have a look around, I guess. I am now protected against the sun. Good. I'm not going to go out too far. I'm just going to keep line of sight on the oasis. And we're just going to kind of go up to some of these little peaks and things. And have a look around. Alright, so there seems to be some kind of weird stone obelisk thing over here. Don't know if it's going to have any relevance to our adventure. But it looks like it's got some kind of star chart. It's got maybe numerals on it. I don't know. I can't tell. Alright, well I made a couple of markers. And so, really, what I'm going to try to do is point the markers back and do some light triangulation. It's kind of a bummer that you can't actively rotate the marker once you put it down, because if you look at the map, it's going to have an arrow right there. But what we can do is we can take that and we can put it right there. And so we filled out our map a little bit. It also looks like we've got another spot over there. And so presuming, as long as we can keep line of sight on this guy, which I got straight line of sight to there, so I assume we have line of sight back as well. We should be able to make it back to the oasis. I would think anyways. But ah, eh, where's life without a little bit of risk? Alright, our next little obelisk marker right here. What are these leading us to? I have no idea. Man, it is blinding looking out that direction. Good God. Such a desolate environment. If you're wondering how this got here, it used to be the bottom of the ocean. Anywhere you see a sandy kind of area like this, just dunes, used to be the bottom of the ocean. 
the deep, deep bottom of the ocean in general. Most deserts used to be the bottom of the ocean. Okay, so there's something over there. I don't know what it is, but there's something. But let's be careful about this first. And we'll just kind of fire a marker back over that way. Okay, let's see how accurate I was. I was actually decently accurate on that one. Uh, we'll put another obelisk marker right here. The real question is, do I keep going and see what that is? Yeah, we're almost out of time. Let's live life on the edge, dude. Let's channel our inner bon John Bon and, you know, oh, we're halfway there. Whoa, whoa, just some sand and air. Appears to be a building of some kind. That's what it looks like to me anyways. Probably the end of the line as far as the breadcrumb trail goes. But we should be careful about this. We don't know where we are. We don't know when we are. There's a lot of open doors right now when it comes to just kind of the principal questions of the game. And so really, an ancient structure. New recipes learned for a furnace and mortar. Okay. So we are actually expected to kind of check these places out. It's inside of here. Some arrows and some cordage. I'll take it. Saves me crafting time. An ancient scroll. A concoction. Okay. What does the concoction do? A slimy mixture which must be cooked to be consumed. All right, so I can eat it, I guess. Oh, we can make a backpack too, but we're gonna have to hunt something in order to get it done. We also haven't seen any real hemp plants around, which worries me. I guess I could have made the hat as well while I was over here. What's up with this thing? It's an artifact? What the hell does an artifact do? An ancient artifact that contains a piece of the chronicles left behind by a human civilization. Uh. It never started. It was always there. A menace from below, as old as our desert. Here, thirst and hunger drive all creatures. But them. They crave blood and flesh. We learned to coexist. Fighting. We fought for millennia. They would never stop. They needed us. To feed. And the more they fed, the more their numbers grow, endangering the very existence of our kind. Okay, so obviously not the most ideal environment to land in if you're going to go on an extra dimensional adventure. Oh uh, look, there's a scorpion, dude. Can I kill it? I mean, it looks like it does die. Got a scorpion stinger? Oh, it's a venom sack. I can actually make one of those concoction things. Uh, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot left around here, but this took a turn. I'll be honest, I was kind of on the fence about it up until that point. Like, I was like, okay, like, it's a survival game, but, like, what is it bringing to the table that we haven't already seen, you know what I mean? And then, there we are, uh, we have a twist. So anyways, this is Star Sand. The demo is available right now. You can check the game on out if you want to. Uh, aside from that, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day, so you don't have to. Today it was Star Sand, tomorrow it will more than likely be something else. As far as my observations about the game, I think that the graphics look great. The only thing is you're in such a stark, barren environment that you don't really get a chance to appreciate them very often unless you're up next to a fire source or something like that. Uh, where I would focus my attention is on cleaning up the UI a little bit. I think this is all perfectly fine over here on the side. I think these are all good right here. I think that's cool, uh, but, you know... It could use a little bit more embellishment, kind of, to bring it on in. Like, what if these little lines right here sort of looked like the ancient hieroglyphs and stuff along the walls? 
uh, things to kind of bring the UI into theme with the rest of the game. Uh, aside from that, animations. I think that's the one thing that jumped out at me the most is the knife animation was really, really rough. The axe animation could have a little bit more twist and bend to it and a little bit more impact to it. Uh, so that's that's what I would focus on. The environment is great. This is definitely like a weird foreign world, and that idea is definitely sinking in for me right now. Uh, the animations, though, were the one big thing, and that weird milky thing that happens at night uh, where everything kind of gets like a weird milky gloss to it almost. Um, I would definitely see if you can make that go away as well just so you get a little bit more clarity during the evenings. But definitely an interesting survival game that I'll be keeping an eye on as it approaches its early access release in the coming weeks. I'll see y'all later. Thank you for stopping on in. That's about all I got for you. You probably want to see the uh, settings as well. Uh, audio splitter, pretty bare bones. Uh, video options, also fairly bare bones, but I do appreciate the fact that they allow you to disable motion blur and depth of field. There is V-Sync available just in case your monitor has a lot of tearing. Gameplay-wise, you can highlight items to make them pop a little bit more, which is nice for accessibility. Enable and disable FPS. Enable and disable the tutorial, notifications, stuff like that. Uh, the keys, are they rebindable? They are indeed. So there you go. That's a check in the old box. Mount sensitivity right there, and you can play inverted in case you prefer it that way. Uh, but yeah, there you go. See y'all next time. Thank you for being here. Bye, everybody.